All righty. So the objective for today is that we are going to review topics that you're going to need that will equip you to sit in certification and not only sit in certification, but also to be successful in the exam. So the nursing process, if you don't, this is one thing that you must know and you have to know this. So the nursing care plan, this is actually a plan of how you're going to deliver the care for the patient. And the, the acronym for it is actually ADPI. So it's assessment, diagnosing, plan, implementation, and evaluation. So they want to know, okay, how can you identify an assessment? How will you identify a plan? And the plan, I want to tell you, the plan is used interchangeably with the word goal. So you may see goal or you may see plan. Implementation and evaluation. So in the assessment, this is where you gather the information on the patient. So say a patient came in and say, you know, my feet hurt and you look at it. That's assessment. Sometimes assessment and evaluation can be closely together. Here's the reason why. So the patient come in and say, I'm feeling a pain in my foot and you assess it, right? You give the patients uh, and you, you give the patient some pain medication, you rub some Benga on it, for example. And then you go back and you assess it again. That's actually evaluation because even though you're assessing again, you're checking, did the pain medication work? Did the Benga work? So know the difference between the assessment and evaluation. The evaluation comes after you do an intervention, all right? So in the assessment, you're gathering data, symptoms the patient is experiencing. And this is a very important step in the nursing process because without this, you won't be able to do an intervention. Diagnosis. Now, this is not a medical diagnosis like a, a doctor say hypertension or heart failure. We cannot diagnose those. What we do is whatever symptomology the patient is feeling, then we take those and formulate the nursing diagnosis. The nursing diagnosis is based on the assessment that you find. So the patient said that their calf was hurting. Then based on the symptoms, the patient has pain, acute pain. That will be the nursing diagnosis. Acute pain because you're feeling the pain now. So the clinical judgment that is made about the patient health or the problem that they're facing. That's how you formulate diagnosis. Whatever problem that they're facing, that you use that to formulate the diagnosis. So say that a patient says, oh, I don't have any appetite. Then based on that problem, the patient is at risk for um, malnutrition due to poor intake. So based on the problem, that's how you formulate the diagnosis. Plan our goal. So the patient had pain in the calf, right? The nursing diagnosis is acute pain. What's your plan? Your plan is so that this patient doesn't have any more pain by the end of the shift or by discharge. This patient doesn't have any pain. That's the goal. The goal should be smart, meaning that it should have a time frame. And this goal serves as a roadmap to where you want to go. The patient complain, complain of, complain of pain. You want to make sure that by the end of the shift, by discharge, the patient has no pain. That is your goal. You must be able to identify what is an assessment, what is a, 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 a diagnosis, a nursing diagnosis, and what is a goal. So what are you going to do? Implementation. Which part of the nursing process will a UPA be able to do? And that's the implementation. This is where you write what the plan is. So for example, the patient coming for pain, the nursing diagnosis is acute pain. The goal is that you're gonna reduce the pain. What are some steps that you can do? You can administer medication, the nurse can do that. You can apply Benga, the nurse or the patient can do that. Say, for example, due to the pain, the patient can't walk and you need a CNA to help with ambulation, 
right? Mm -hmm. So the CNA can do that. So in the implementation section of the nursing process or care plan, this is where other team member comes in, in the implementation section. So this one, where if you have a UPA or if you have a team, which part of the nursing process that they can um, take place or they can participate in, and it's the implementation process. The evaluation is the last step of the nursing process. And this is where you go back and check. What I did, did it work? I give pain medication, I, I rub Benge on it. Did it work? If it worked, kudos, your plan is good. If it did not work, you have to revise your care plan again to say, okay, then let's do an ultrasound. Do I need to change from Tylenol to something much stronger? Let's do an x-ray. So in the evaluation process, you're going to reassess. In the first part, you assess. In the last part, you reassess. All right? The patient complains of pain and pain medication was administered. The, pa the nurse went back and checked to see how the patient is going, doing. Which part of the care plan is that part? And that's the evaluation. So you must, you must know that. So let's look at this. A patient, John Doe, 72 year old, 72 year old, that's surgery in July. Medical history is hypertension, type two diabetes. And patient report mild discomfort in the operated eye, mild blurry vision, slight headache. Vital signs, uh, BP is 135 over 80. Heart rate is 72. Temperature is 98.4. Operated eyes covered with protective shield. No signs of infection or excessive discharge. Mild edema around the operative eye. So the question to you is, list three nursing diagnoses for this patient. What will be three nursing diagnoses for this patient? Well, the patient is at risk for infection. So we're gonna have risk for infection. Let me get another color. Risk, I'm gonna put um, RI, risk for infection. Uh, but if you even look here, look at the subjective data. Patient report mild pain. So what if nursing diagnosis would be? I would say pain. What's, a, what's another? And we have mild edema around the eye. So which is a swell that you say, but what can occur because you have edema around the eye? Risk for fall due to poor vision or impaired vision. Okay. So the R, risk for fall. I'm going to put F. If you notice, I have a risk and I have actual. Here's the thing. There's like three types of nursing diagnosis. There's actual nursing diagnosis where the problem is happening right now. And there are potential nursing diagnosis where the person is at risk. So because of the, per the, the surgery, this person is at risk for infection. This person is at risk for fall. They haven't fallen yet. But this person has pain. So it's an actual diagnosis right now. So that's the difference between both. All right. Any question on that? Starting for consent. So, all right. Acute pain, risk for infection, deficient knowledge related to post-operative care. So these are three that I pre-placed inside here. I wanted to list me three goals or three, three plans that could go with these nursing diagnoses. What would be your goal for someone with acute pain? Or no pain, between, um, no pain by discharge or with decreased level of pain to four or five, that's correct. So that would be the goal for acute pain. What would be your goal for risk for infection? Or in the, even when they go home, patients mm -hmm. will have no signs uh, and symptoms of infection. What about the deficit knowledge related to post-operative um, care. So those are goals. So make sure that you're able to identify what the goal is. Um, it's just like, and I, I, I must add this, that I use the nursing process a lot for a lot of my projects. 
I assess what my problem is, identify a goal. I want to be able to do this by this time. And I write the steps that I need to accomplish this. So make sure that you know the difference between the assessment, uh, the diagnosis and the goal. So interventions for your pain. Give me three interventions that you can do for your pain, three interventions you can do to reduce the risk of infection and three interventions that you can do to prevent or enhance knowledge, the patient knowledge. What are some of the things that can take place to prevent infection from occurring? Maintain area um, clean and, and dry. Yes. Yes, you could also educate the patient on hand washing, although that can come into knowledge deficit, but to prevent mm -hmm. that too, and also drop, and um, sometimes, and you guys best be able to tell me, they can drop maybe um, antibiotics in their eyes, eye drop if it's ordered after surgery, all right? So what would also be the intervention for someone who has knowledge deficit? Teaching, yes, demonstrating and have them return back the demonstration. All right. So what would what would you what would you evaluate? What would you check based on the diagnosis, based on the problem? What are you going to evaluate? What are you, go, what are you going to reassess? All right. And that's for the knowledge deficit. You want to check if it works, all right? What else are you going to evaluate? And what else are you going to check based on the nursing diagnosis? <laughs> you're going to check the pain level, all right? What else are you going to check or whatever you're going to reevaluate? We have pain, we have infection. Yeah, education, we have pain level. What about the infection? You're going to check, well, does a person have an infection or not? Mm -hmm. All right? This is very important. They build their the, the test around the nursing process. And they want to know that you can identify each step of the nursing process, right? So make sure that you know which, you know, how to identify an intervention. The intervention is you actually doing something about the problem. Mm 